So I'm just gonna go ahead and get started. Um, so HTV versus DTF, the very base level, what these both are, these are decoration methods for various types of garments. So today we'll talk about um, just a few different options for what you all will have. We will be going over what exactly HTV is, what exactly DTF is. I know that we have a lot of kind of like terms and acronyms and things that people tend to throw around. And if you don't know what you're talking about, it can definitely get very confusing. Or if you're newer, it can be very intimidating to try to learn 20 different names for things. So hopefully this will help you all out. We'll be talking about when you can use some specific um, different types of HTV versus DTF. We'll talk a little bit about special effects because that's a really fun thing about HTV. Uh, we'll talk about some art guidelines and then there's a little slide at the end with some you know, inspirational ideas and we'll also take questions throughout. So feel free if anybody has questions at all to be dropping them in the chat so that we can make sure that we are answering them. Okay, so. HTV, he is heat transfer vinyl. And so this is a material, it comes on a roll or a sheet and you'll use a vinyl cutter and cut it out and weed it. Um, this is kind of a really good option for anybody who wants to be producing in-house. If you don't have screen printing equipment or any kind of printing, you can purchase HTV, you can get yourself a cutter, and then you can just cut and weed it yourself. This is a little bit labor intensive uh, because it takes time to cut it. And then if you have fine details, you'll be weeding all of those little pieces out. Um, so if you don't want to do the cutting and weeding, but you still want to use HTV, we do have options for our CAD cut vinyl to come to you um, ready to go. And we have a five piece minimum for that. Um, and the nice thing about HTV is that you're not limited to just one single finish, one single color. You can layer things. You can get a wide variety of different types of vinyl depending on what you're applying it to and that sort of thing. Direct to film. So DTF is kind of a really big hot topic of the decoration industry right now. I know a lot of people are purchasing and coming up with new types of printers and there's there will be popping up all over the place, people doing DTF. Um, and this is a, um, it says heat transfer process that digitally prints designs onto a heat sensitive film. Um, this is a really good full color option. So whereas, um, vinyl, you're cutting it out of one solid sheet and then weeding it out. This is printing exactly what your design looks like. So you can do gradients, you can do really fine detailing, and you can do as many colors as you want. You know, screen printing, a lot of times you have to up your price a lot if you want to do multiple colors because it's a much more involved process to add more colors. You have to burn screens and that sort of thing. Whereas with DTF, that is not an issue at all. Um, we at stalls our brand of dtf is called ultra color max um, and we can apply it to cotton polyester or blends using a heat press um, and there is no minimum or setup fees at stalls rebecca we have two questions yes. regarding htv you may get okay. to them but i just want to throw them out there for you sure lori is asking if we cut for a fee so our um, services? So we offer services and you would pay for the transfers. Um, so yes, I would say it's not like a specific fee to cut it, but it's a fee you purchase the transfers and they would be sent to you. So you wouldn't, in that case, buy rolls of vinyl. And then Robert is asking on heat transfer vinyl, are there different weights of material? Yes, so there will be different thicknesses of the vinyl itself, um, and I do not have them all memorized, um, but if you go onto our website on stalls.com, if you find the, um, the product spec sheet, it will tell you the thickness of the vinyl. So I guess I don't know if it'll say the specific weight per se, um, but you can find out like how thick and how durable it is based on that. Yeah, we're giving you the microns. Yes, the microns. Thank you. Uh, and then one more question mm -hmm. uh, before we go uh, back to your presentation. What it, Dawn is asking what the shelf life of HTV is. 
So I believe that it can last several months as long as it is kept in a controlled environment. So you don't want it to be in direct sunlight. You don't want it to get too, whole, too cold or hot or too humid. Um, all of these environmental factors can affect the longevity of the um, adhesive, uh, but it can last a few months. I don't know what the exact shelf life is, though. Do you okay. happen to know, Shauna? It depends on how it's stored. You're right. So mm -hmm. if it's stored in a temperature controlled environment, it will last several months. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's what I thought. Okay. Um, is that it or are we good to move on? Back to you. Okay. Perfect. Okay, so now we're going to go into a few situations of when you might specifically want to use heat transfer vinyl. I know, like I said before, direct to film is the thing that's kind of taking the garment decoration industry by storm. Um, and because of that, a lot of people are abandoning HTV for a lot of those situations in which they would have been using it. So here are some cases in which you might specifically want to use HTV versus DTF. So heat transfer vinyl is really great when it comes to numbers. Um, you can keep stock numbers um, and the names for things like jerseys. So, for example, you know, we have this football jersey here. That vinyl on there is going to be one of our very durable, thick ones. So, you know, a, a football jersey is going to be taking quite a beating when it comes to, you know, what they're doing with that jersey. It's going to be getting literally hit and beat up, you know. Uh, so you want something that's going to be thick. You want something that's going to adhere to that fabric and something that'll last. Um, so that's one of the reasons you would want this for our pre-cut names and numbers. They come in a variety of different sizes, so you can buy stock numbers. And like we were saying before, they last a few months. So if you purchase some number packs and then, you know, you get a team in, you already have those numbers ready to go, ready to press. Um, so that is one of them. You can also get rolls of material and cut your own numbers, uh, but we offer a variety of different sizes. Uh, so we, we have numbers to suit your needs as well. Um, player perfect. So on that kind of um, vein that I was talking about with sports, player perfect is a really great option for team decoration because through stalls, this is one of our um, custom cut services, you can get your name pre-aligned with your number on the same carrier. So you don't have to be measuring everything out, making sure that that name is perfectly straight and perfectly aligned with that number. You just have one transfer to it here. It makes everything so much faster and so much easier on you as a decorator, and you can get those orders out faster because of this. Um, there, these products, HTV, it's really great for names and customization, um, personalization. Uh, when you're screen printing, you know, if you have a family that wants everyone's individual names on their shirt, you're not going to want to screen print that because you don't want to use one single screen for each individual name. Whereas with HTV, you can cut out all those names from the same sheet and then weed them and get them ready to go. It's really great for on-demand heat printing because I, I don't. I hope you can't hear. There's some construction going on next to me, so I apologize if that's distracting. Um, so for on-demand printing, if you have rolls of vinyl ready to go in your shop, you can just pull that out. You can cut it and weed it, and you're good to go. You don't have to wait on the long processes of other things. You don't have to wait for things to get shipped to you. So it's really great for that type of job as well. Um, some of the products that we have, we have Ultra Weed and Premium Plus. So those are two of our HTV products that are very popular for um, kind of your everyday wear. I was talking a little bit about the sport type before. These are great for, you know, your cottons. Um, Premium Plus has a very nice stretch to it. So if you need something on like yoga pants or an athletic shirt that you need a low application temperature, both of these are going to be good options for those everyday jobs. So this is my favorite thing to talk about when it comes to HTV, and it's the special effect options that we have. So the one that we're displaying here is Puff, um, and this is a newer one. So you order this as a roll. I don't think currently we have the option for you to order the transfer services, but 
um, you cut your own and you get it, it has dimension to it. So it comes as a flat roll, but then when you press it, the heat activates it to then expand and become a fuller transfer. And it looks really, really nice, especially on like thicker, heavier fabrics. It kind of takes on the texture of them. So you can kind of get that, that nice feeling that's a little bit different and it looks different than other types of things. Um, some other special effects that we have are like twill, we have um, chrome colored, you know, we have a variety of different types of HTV that can give you things that screen printing, DTF, don't have the ability to give you. Oh, here we go. Some more special effects. So glitter is a really good one. Um, this one, we do have the option for you to order it as a transfer. You can get kind of like the texture of actual glitter on your shirt. This I know is super popular for things like cheer and other like sports like that for spirit wear. So there are plenty of different things that you can't do with DTF. You can't use DTF to print the actual glitter. Um, and here you have it with HTV. So this is a really nice one. Um, we have textured soft foam. So this is another kind of dimensional one. It feels like velvet, like a raised texture. Um, this one is really nice for layering because you can put other things on top of it. And it works really well as a cut your own or again, you can order it as a service. We have another special effect here, which is the safety uh, reflective. So a lot of people that I speak with personally, they work with construction crews. I've heard of people working with police forces and things like that and doing their decorations. And so we have HTV that meets um, high visibility safety standards. So all of these standards that you have to hit, you know, you can't just pull any old thing and slap it on there and say, this is reflective for a safety job. It does have to meet specific requirements. And so we do have reflective options that meet those requirements. And so you can feel confident that you are decorating those garments with the correct thing. Um, more this is kind of seasonal and relevant. Uh, we're getting into Halloween, so it's kind of like spooky season. Um, you, we have a glow in the dark HTV. You can cut that out, add it onto different things, and then that's really cute for you know events and for children's stuff. And this is another just fun usage. Um, it looks white normally, and then it glows. You know that kind of classic glow in the dark green once it's in the dark. Um, here's just another couple that I, I briefly touched on, like the um, like glitter already, soft flock. Um, it kind of has, um, it looks almost a little bit fuzzy, um, that flocked um, texture to it. We have metallic options. Um, silicone dye block is another big one that's kind of important and helpful. Um, so that prevents dye migration. So say you are printing onto soccer jerseys and you need to be adding those names and numbers. A lot of soccer jerseys are already sublimated. And so if you press just anything onto them, you could risk getting that dye migration. And so the dye will actually bleed through into your transfer. So say you have a dark blue soccer jersey and they want white numbers on it and you press a white transfer and then all of a sudden your transfer is light blue. Um, so dye migration is a very big thing that happens. And so silicon dye block is something that can help out with that and prevent that dye migration. Um, and then chroma bling, I believe, is what this lovely woman is wearing on her shirt. Um, it has that chrome reflective. It changes color as it moves. Um, and it looks really, really nice. And again, it's just something that you can't get from other types of decoration. So now we're going to talk. Do we have any questions? I guess um, I should stop. For yep. I was just going to interrupt you. Yeah. We do have a bunch of questions for you. Okay. Lovely. Okay. So Rick asks, and I'm not sure we may need some clarification. He said, right now you have to order DTF in sheets, but they send it in rolls. 
Can you offer it in a roll so the art doesn't have to be sent in sheet size? Um, so I'm not 100% sure I understand the question. So for DTF, it should be priced not per sheet. It should be per individual image. Um, so you don't have to do any kind of gang sheeting. And it will show up on a roll because that's how the um, carrier flows through the machine. Um, are you, I guess... We do have another full color product that I is kind of similar to DTF on transferexpress.com, um, Ultra Color Pro. That comes on sheets, um, but that you it it it's a little bit different. If you have some clarification for us, Rick, shoot that in the chat, and we'll get to your question. Okay, uh, Deirdre is asked saying, she uses the highly reflective 3M HTV. Is there a high vis equivalent in DTF? I do not believe so. So that's, that's kind of part of the reason that we're having this conversation today is that DTF kind of can't do everything. Um, so we don't have the ability to hit those safety requirements with DTF. So, um, I don't even know if there's necessarily like the metallic sheen to it. I've not seen that in DTF. So that would be a situation in which you would need to be using HTV. Uh, Carr is asking on the two color thermofilm example, is this layered or perfectly placed outline? That would be layered, I believe. Um, I didn't create that image, so I'm not 100% sure, but I believe that would be a layer. Okay, Robert asks, on HTV, can we print on all the HTV material if we have a solvent printer? Uh, Robert, I will drop in the chat the uh, printable products, a link to the printable products that we have. Thank you, Sean. Uh, Alfonso is asking if Puff is a type of HTV. Yes, Puff is a type of HTV. So that is one that we only currently offer as a roll of vinyl. So you can purchase the roll and if you have a cutter, cut it yourself and press it. And then Alfonso is also asking how durable Puff and glitter is. Puff is, is 25 washes, glitter okay. is 50. Yeah, I was gonna say, I didn't know about Puff's washability, yep. but there you go. All right, Lori wants to know, how does the price on these two applications compare to silk, silk screening? And I'm not sure which two applications she's referring to. Just like HTV and DTF? Yeah, I believe so. So I'm gonna speculate a little bit here. Um, so generally speaking, when people are printing with screen printing, you will only want to be doing large runs. Um, most people prefer to keep screen printing jobs 75 to 100 or bigger, because when you burn those screens, mix that ink, you want to get as much out of those as possible, because then on your next job, you have to burn a new screen and all of that. Um, so typically, you're going to be using HTV for smaller quantities and screen printing for larger. So I don't know the direct um, print for print comparison. I believe that at smaller quantities, generally speaking, HTV is cheaper. And the same thing with DTF. So at least at stalls, we offer a no minimum six cent per square inch DTF. And then when you get into those larger orders, there's no quantity breaks on pricing. So that six cents per square inch is whether you're getting one left chest four by four logo or if you're getting 200 full front logos. And so in that case, screen printing is going to be cheaper at that high quantity. Um, and our HTV products, it, there's also quantity breaks for the transfers themselves. So I would say it really it really depends on your quantity, your number of colors and that sort of thing on what's gonna be cheaper. Um, and if you have any like specific questions, um, you can shoot that to one of our representatives and they'd be able to give you detailed pricing on what each would be at your specific quantity needs. <clears throat> Okay, Pamela asks if special effect materials can be layered with DTF. 
Yes, they can. Um, one really popular one that I've been seeing a lot has been the soft foam with DTF on top. Uh, but just in general, people are combining these different methods to create even more unique looks. So yes, they are. Um, you would have to look at the specifications for each individual one to make sure that it is able to be layered. Um, but in general, I'm going to say yes. Uh, okay. And then Tom is asking if the reflective comes in various colors or just silver. I believe there are other colors of reflective. I don't know about the safety ratings on those though. You're correct. The safety okay. is only in the silver. We do have other reflective products, but they do not meet safety requirements. Okay. Uh, then that we just answered Brandon's question. What's uh, the reflective two versus the 3M reflective? The 3M yep. reflective meets safety requirements. Um, okay, so Rick followed up on his question. Okay. says when uploading images, you can only upload sizes, not sheets. That is that is correct, individual images. Okay, yes. Yeah. So that's, you, you purchase it on the individual image and then it's all printed kind of at the same time as you're able to. Um, and so that's why it comes on those rolls. So the largest size that we offer is 22 by 22. Could you remind me what Rick's question was previously? Sorry, I've answered a lot in between. Yeah, um, you have to order DTF in sheets, but they send it in rolls. Can you offer it in a roll so the art doesn't have to be sent in sheet sizes? Okay, so if you wanted to upload one 22 by 22 inch, that's the size that we can give you as far as like sheet size. Um, so that's the biggest that we go. Okay. Um, oh, okay. he wants to know if you'd be able to order 22 inches wide and unlimited length. Oh, no. 22 by 22 is the max that we, we offer okay. at this current time. Yeah, I don't know about the future and what they might be adding or changing. That's not something that I am privy to at this time. Um, but I can definitely just pass it along and say, hey, I had this question asked um, and see. And then Jesse said he's a screen printer and he says the bigger the run, the better. Their minimums mm -hmm. are 25. So to 25. Support were, okay. yeah, to support what you were talking about. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to go back to that and we'll catch up with the next questions. Sure. Yes. Okay. Um, so when to use DTF. So like I said before, this is kind of this type of transfer is really blowing up, really popping off, especially just because you're able to produce, like I was saying before, really low minimum. So we have a no minimum, one single transfer. So if you need a full color, small order, this is this is great. Um, it feels really soft and nice. It applies to a wide variety of things. Um, this is produced um, on our side of things. I can't speak to other manufacturers, of course, uh, but we produce it using CMYK colors. Um, you can either do spot color for, you know, or you can go all the way up to, you know, 100 colors. You know, there's no color that's going to affect your pricing, which is another difference between this and like screen printing. So if you want a gradient, if you want shading, like I said, if you have a really high number of colors, that is where DTF is really going to shine. So as you can see from this um, gradient on here, this pink to yellow, there's a very nice soft gradient. So if you're layering different things, there's going to be that harsh line, that edge. If you're you know, doing an outline of one color and then the next, um, you can't get this kind of thing where it's a, a literal gradient. Sunsets are really, you know, popular. Ink splotching where it's kind of like watercolor looking. Um, that, that is something that's difficult to screen print um, and only would be if you used printable HTV. Um, but here you have the ability to do DTF. Um, like I said before, we have no minimum for DTF. So where the minimum for our size, the minimum size order in HTV is five pieces, there's no size minimum for the um, DTF. So if you have a one to four piece run, this is going to be your go-to because you don't have to order extras and waste it. Um, DTF is really great for those kind of smaller transfers as well because you can get really high detail with them. You know, that 
patch on a hat is probably like this big um, and you can get really fine lines that you don't have to like weed around it or anything like that. Um, and then again, with it being size based, if you order 25 of those, it's going to be cheaper than ordering an entire roll of vinyl and cutting it all out. Oh, like I said before, fine details. Um, so when you cut and weed vinyl, it can be a quite tedious task. And sometimes, you know, you're doing, you know, 13, 14, 100 transfers. That weeding is going to get very tedious, very tiring. With DTF, you don't have to do any of that. It's just ready to press. Nothing else is involved. So if you have those fine lines, those details, this DTF, our product, is going to last, it's going to adhere, and it's going to be much less work intensive for the decorator. Um, DTF is really great for heat sensitive fabrics. So our product applies as low as 290 degrees, which means that you can put it on almost anything. Um, so you can put it on polyester, you can put it on a tri-blend shirt that has spandex in it. Um, it has a nice stretch to it as well. So for like workout apparel, things like that, that you need that stretch, Ultra Color Max has that ability to be able to move with your fabric. Uh, like Lycren spandex. I didn't realize that was on my next slide. I forgot about that one. Uh, but yeah, so for the stretch, um, you know, this is here on a pair of yoga pants. Um, that would be something that certain types of HTV would also work for, um, but you'd want to be careful making sure you're using the right one so that it doesn't crack when you stretch that fabric. And DTF, you won't have that problem. So here are some art tips that we have. So art questions are ones that we get all the time. Um, so this is just kind of a, a little a little reminder, a little refresher, or maybe if you haven't ordered from us and you have questions, here is something that we can kind of help you out with a little bit. So if you have the ability, vector art is always going to be your best bet. Um, we do charge a fee if you have non-vector art, so there's a raster fee. And then on top of that, this will just help you to be able to know really what your art is specifically going to look like. So for like scaling your art up and down, you want it to be vector. So, you know, if you have an AI or an SVG file, PDFs, those are definitely preferred over like a PNG or a JPEG. Um, something that we cannot print using DTF is where the gradient kind of fades to nothing. So we can do gradients between colors, but we can't get that like it's the soft edge all the way out. So like down at the bottom of that screen over there, you see around the cat where it's the, the hard line. Um, that is what your artwork has to have for us to be able to print it versus with that soft edge, we aren't able to do that. Um, so with the transparencies, it says no transparencies, but where that would be wanted is if you want your garment color to show through. Um, so you can have transparencies in your artwork. You would just want to make sure that that color that you want to see is whatever color your garment is. So if you were putting that um, flag onto a white shirt, that white would show through for the lines. But if you're putting it on a black shirt, you'd have black coming through. So just being aware of knowing what your artwork is going to look like once you've applied it onto that uh, garment. Um, so your line thickness um, is 0 0.018 inches. So, you know, we can get that pretty small, um, but it's a good thing to know so that you don't have anything that gets messed up. If you do have those really fine details and you're like, is this going to print? That is our line thickness of what it should be. Um, as said before, the maximum image size is 22 by 22 inches um, for those big oversized prints or if you are doing a gang sheet or something like that. And our minimum size is a quarter of an inch by a quarter of an inch. So you could get teeny tiny little transfers um, and no smaller than that. That's I guess that's our minimum. We say we have no minimum. The minimum is one quarter of an inch by quarter of an inch transfer. Um, and it is printed in CMYK. So if you need any color matching or anything like that, knowing the CMYK um, value is going to be very important 
for you getting that perfect match from us. And here is our idea gallery. Um, so as someone was asking before about like the layering um, down in that lower left hand corner, you have soft foam and ultra color max. Like I said, that's kind of what I've been seeing a lot of lately that people are tending to really enjoy. Um, and then, you know, glitter flake, it looks like that's two different colors of glitter flake. So that would be two printed together. Um, Ultra Color Max can go, like I said, on a variety of things. There it's on some koozies. I believe those are cork, um, if I'm not mistaken. I've seen it on wood. I've seen it on cardboard. Um, so if I were all of you, I would join our Facebook group. It's called Heat Press for Profit. Um, and it's full of a bunch of other like-minded decorators that are using a variety of different types of products in a variety of industries all over the country. And they share stories. They ask questions. If you have a question, you can ask and you'll have a bunch of people coming and helping you out and offering you different solutions of things that they have found that worked. So outside of just, you know, calling up customer service or a representative from the company you're using, um, you can call or you can make a post and call upon your fellow decorators and get that community. So I think these this Facebook group is a really great option for anybody just looking, like I said, to have that community or con to connect with people in the industry as well. I am good to take any more questions that we have. Okay, we do have a couple. Okay. Carol asked, if you have a recommendation for applying DTF on black poly, is there a good way to do it where the heat press doesn't scorch or leave a mark on the dark shirt? Sure. So black polyester is a very difficult fabric to press on in general. I'm sure everybody in the comments would agree with you um, that that is tough. So my biggest kind of troubleshooting tips. I don't know what you've tried already. So um, I apologize if this is repetitive or something you've heard before. But my tips that my first go to's would be making sure that your pressure is correct. So a lot of times when your um, temperature is not the problem when it comes to scorching, very often it is the pressure. So making sure that the pressure is not too high, because uh, you're going to be crushing those fibers and scorching them. Um, and so that's why it can be really important to have a heat press that has a digital readout of your pressure, because if you have a heat press and you're just you're just guessing on the pressure, you might think that you have a medium, but you might have a high pressure. And so you might be unintentionally causing that scorching. Um, so making sure that your pressure is correct is my number one tip. And sometimes if you know your pressure is correct, if you have a good heat press, it does have a digital readout. Sometimes decreasing your pressure just a little bit and increasing your time just a little bit can help with that. Um, of course, temperature is always one of the causes of scorching. Um, so making sure that you have a transfer that applies at a low heat um, and then again, just backing off your heat just a little bit and letting that dwell time go for a little bit longer to help with that scorching issue. Um, so can if you know, sorry. Can I add a tip yes. for you? Sure. So this comes from Jennifer Johnson, okay. who's on our outside sales team, and she does a lot of uh, work with our DTF products. She recommends testing out the flexible application pad if you're having a lot of scorching issues. So we sell that, I'll drop a link in the chat, but you wanna preheat that flexible application pad before the first press for about 45 seconds. Uh, it'll retain the heat after that. You don't wanna use any other cover sheets, upper platen covers, nothing else. You want a 305 temp for a 35 dwell time, about a 60 PSI or medium pressure and peel it hot. Uh, that should push out that heat enough to not make the polyester like shiny or scorch. Yes. Yes. So that was actually going to be my next tip was going to be trying out the flexible application pad. Um, yeah, it distributes the heat differently. And so that can definitely help. Um, so thank you, Shauna and Jennifer for that one. Um, and then my final tip is your platen size. Um, so if you're pressing like a left chest, and 
you are pressing the full front of the shirt, that box might be a little bit more obvious. So if you, again, it depends on the type of press you have, but if you have a press that you're able to interchange the platens, if you just get a smaller platen, that can kind of help at least if you are, you know, if you're pressing, that can at least help reduce this, the area that's going to be affected. Um, so getting as small of a platen as possible, as close to the size of your transfer. So those are my anti-scorching tips. Like I said, I don't know what you've already tried, but hopefully at least one of those will be helpful for you. Excellent. Uh, somebody was asking about layering processes. So mm -hmm. I dropped a link to okay. what can be layered in the chat. And the next question comes from John. Do you offer a super thick vinyl like Caesar Brick 600? Okay, I'm not familiar with what that exact vinyl is, but we do offer thicker vinyls. Um, so I believe that some of our thicker vinyls would be thermofilm. Um, silicone dye block. Silicone dye block. Memorable. Okay. So silicone dye block, that was one that I mentioned before that helps with dye migration. It is also a thick one. I've heard of people using it even just on cotton because they need that, that texture, that thickness. So uh, Alejandro is asking what works best for jersey shirts, DTF or HTV? So that's a good question. I think that that kind of depends on the look that you're going for. So if you're printing jerseys, generally speaking, I would probably say HTV. Um, but if you have a full color logo, you know, they want like the team name or something like that, the team logo on there, um, DTF, you should be able to apply it um, as well. Um, but if you're doing like names and numbers, I would say um, HTV would be your best bet. Uh, great. And then Derek is asking if DTF will hold up as well as say an econoprint transfer. I'm not sure what an econoprint transfer is. Be like a screen printed transfer. Oh, okay. Okay. Yes. So DTF has been wash tested for up to 50 or well, our DTF. Ultra Color Max has been wash tested for up to 50 washes. And I think that's just where they stop wash testing it. I hear from people all the time that it outlives the garment. Um, so you, you know, it's a shirt that you love, you wear it all the time, you wash it, you know, once a week. Um, it's going to last a really, really long time. It does have a very good durability. It has a really great adhesion as long as it is applied with the correct time temperature and pressure. The next question is from John. He wants to know if he can lay out multiple logos or multiple artwork um, images on one sheet for DTF and then cut it when it arrives. So you can do this. Um, I don't generally recommend people to uh, kind of gang sheet for Ultra Color Max. And my reasoning for that is because you are gonna be paying per square inch so if you upload just one logo, we don't have a minimum. So if you need only one, and so you're like, oh, I'll just gang sheet and get everything all at once. Um, I would just order each one and then actually like upload them to your cart and order them all at the same time so that you pay the same shipping price. But if you upload a gang sheet and you have one transfer here and one transfer here and one transfer here, you're gonna be paying for the space in between transfers as well. So I would not recommend gang sheeting when it comes to Ultra Color Max, um, but if it's a convenience thing, it is an option and you can do it. All right, I'm sorry, I'm filtering through here. Jeremy asks, what pressure do you need for polyester when applying DTF? So I believe that Ultra Color Max is a medium pressure, so at like a six or a seven. Um, and so I would back it down to maybe a five um, and try that for that scorching issue. Next question is from Jesse. What product do you suggest to use if the artwork has soft edges? Um, I would... I honestly don't know what we have that would accommodate that. Um, we have, you know, 
unless your gradient goes out to a color that is the same as the shirt, you could maybe achieve that look without it actually having a soft edge. Um, but I don't know that we have a transfer that would accommodate an actual fade of the ink to nothing, if that makes sense. The, the problem, Jesse, is you can't get enough adhesive on the back uh, so that the edge would stick. That's why, that's why soft edges are a problem. Mm -hmm. You may be able to achieve that look with screen printing if your art is done properly. Yes, true. Yes, screen printing might be your best bet there. Or uh, something with a common backer. If you don't, if you want that look, you could put it on a product like uh, CAD prints, where your mm -hmm. artwork would have a common color on the back, like a white color or something. Yes. Yep. Uh, let's see. Yes, Rick. The uh, presentation will be sent out 24 hours after it concludes. All right, Lamont. His question is: Do you is it better to buy a DTF printer or just order transfers? That is a very good question. Um, my personal opinion is that it is better to just order transfers. Um, DTF printers are relatively new technology. So like I was saying, like it is absolutely taking the world by storm currently. But I would hold off and wait to buy a printer until... Mm, we get a little bit further along in the development of them. They require a lot of maintenance. They require you to have a very controlled humidity environment in your shop. Um, so in general, I would say order transfers. Alfonso asks, what's the best option for translucency, having colors show through others? Hmm. I'm having colors show through others. So are we talking about like a layering situation? Um, I'm not sure. We may, we may want to get some clarification on that. Yeah. Uh, the Facebook page, Ruben, is uh, heat press for profit. I put that into the chat. So that's mm -hmm. in there for you. Uh, thank you for the folks who added that answer. Um, Cindy asks, do you sell DTF paper and film for me to make my own DTF transfers? We do not. Currently, we only sell the transfers themselves as Ultra Color Max. And then McGill is asking if uh, you're aware of some of the better brand printers for DTF. Currently, I don't have any that come to mind that I'm like, I recommend this. Okay. Um... Renee says she sees a sample of a Huggy using Ultra Color Max. In my experience, is that Ultra Color has not worked on neoprene. That might be a, a polyester uh, koozie. Mm -hmm. When would you do DTF versus a printed vinyl for full color? So this is going to really come down to two main things. Um, number one is going to be the... Um, the, the hand feel. Number two is going to be the pricing. So I would almost always go with DTF for just, you know, if it's going on like a cotton shirt and we're talking about a full color printed logo, I would say go with DTF because in my experience, it has a slightly better feel to it. Um, I'm not going to say it feels like a screen print, but it's closer to screen print than to vinyl. Um, so I find I just prefer it a little bit more. So that's my answer to that question. Uh, Lynn said soft foam is similar to the Brick 600. Thank you, Lynn. Okay. Uh, she's works with both products, obviously. Thanks, uh, Lynn. Lydia put in some tips about being careful when cutting up your ganged images. She yes. had a little mishap, it looks like. I've had that happen too, cutting apart a gang sheet and I accidentally just like trim the edge of a, an image and I'm like, oh, so yes, definitely something to watch out for. Chelsea asks, can you recommend the best method for layering DTF transfers on top of each other? Um, Shauna, did you say you linked um, the- that was, Yeah, that was, uh, there's not, DTF's not listed there. That's for oh, okay. HTV. You just have to test really, test to see if yeah. it's going to work. And so that would be a really great thing to pop in that um, heat press for profit Facebook group. Um, if you have two things that you want to layer with, like, you know, you have this um, type of vinyl, you want to put DTF on top of it. 
ask people if they've done it before, see if there's been any success with it. Um, another great resource for that sort of thing is our YouTube channel, Stalls TV. Um, we have a ton of videos of kind of more experimental type things of layering different types of products of um, application tips and things like that. So those would be my recommendations for that since I don't personally, um, I don't have experience with it. So I don't know personally. Uh, Natasha suggests uh, sublimation would be a great option for soft edges. Okay. So thanks, Natasha, for mm -hmm. throwing that in the chat. And that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Natasha. Jessica, what would be the best product for a vintage or distressed look? I would say because typically with vintage and distressed looks, you have a lot of show through of the garment. Um, so whether, you know, it looks a little bit weathered or torn or something like that, I would say of these that we're talking about, DTF. Um, but if we were talking with Transfer Express products in mind as well, I would go with a screen printed transfer. So either Hot Split Retro or Goof Proof would be my recommendations. But I know that's straying outside of the stalls specific products, and that's going into Transfer Express products as well. Um, let's see. What is the durability of DTF compared to screen printing? Um, I would say the durability, as long as, again, I'm assuming this is applied with the correct time, temperature, and pressure, I would say it is very comparable. Um, obviously, it's going to depend on the specific screen print, um, but DTF has a very long life cycle, a very long last. So I would say that it's just as high quality, um, just as durable as a screen print. Um, all right. Uh, minimum shipping fee for DTF. And is there a maximum if uh, the customer orders a, a lot of images? I don't think there's a maximum. Um, the, the, what happens is if the, uh, if there's a lot of images, it looks, it may extend the turnaround time. Yes. Yes. So instead of, you know, we have that next day shipping, um, or ships the next business day if you order it by a specific time. If your size, if your order size is above a certain amount, then it will get kicked and add an additional day. Um, that is listed somewhere on our website as well. Um, and I don't know the specific shipping. I believe it depends on your location. Um, and it, because our shipping fees are through like UPS, FedEx, whoever your carrier is. Um, okay, the, uh, from Alex, uh, do you recommend using an upper platen cover? It depends on what you're pressing. Um, I would recommend it if you want to use one for um, HTV. Um, if you're doing screen printed transfers, a lot of times adding anything in between the transfer and the platen can affect the transfer. Um, but for HTV and DTF, if you want to use one, if you feel it would be beneficial, then yes. Sharon asks if there's any training and hints on making transfers for a hat. That would be um, on making the transfers yourself or on just doing the application. As I was going to say, I could direct you once again, I would direct you to our YouTube channel. Um, I don't have a hat press um, currently, uh, so I can't really show you anything right now. But we have a the 360 IQ hat press is the stalls. Um, right now it's our number one like best selling heat press. It is um, that would be my number one recommendation for anybody who wants to do hats. Uh, any way to avoid the plasticky feel of large, solid Ultra Color Max prints? Um, I think it kind of feels just the way it feels. I don't know that there's necessarily a way to change the texture of it. Um, I think the feeling is more noticeable on much thinner garments. Um, but of course that's going to be a conversation between you and your customer and what type of garment they want to be printing on. Uh, but for those large solid blocks of color, the, I don't think there's a way to make the transfer feel anything other than what it is. Negative space in the artwork. 
Yeah. Yeah. Instead of doing those big solid chunks, if you have any places that you could put transparencies, let the um, garment show through, the feeling will be soft, smoother. Mm -hmm. uh, Sharon asks, uh, she says, yes, she has the 360 hat press and not sure what to start with. Oh, okay. So you're looking for like ideas of what to use. Um, so again, I would say go ahead to YouTube, see what other people are doing. Um, on our website, we do have a very wide variety of emblems and patches. Those are kind of the hot ticket item for hats right now. And if you have the 360 IQ, that's what it was designed to be able to apply. Um, so I would absolutely start looking around at emblems and patches. All right, let me check the chat and see if there's any last questions. Uh, Car recommends softening the feel with a second press using the hot tronic siliconized sheets a little bit. Okay. Um, Good to know. The difference. What is the difference between stalls and transfer express? Okay. So that is a very good question because a lot of people either only know one or they don't know the difference at all. So stalls is kind of the mother company. Um, that is where you're going to get your emblems and patches. That's where you're going to get your HTV um, and DTF. And then Transfer Express is kind of the screen printed division. Um, so it is a separate website. There is a separate YouTube channel and all of that, but they're both under the same kind of company umbrella. Um, so Transfer Express is going to be if you are wanting a screen printed transfer and we also print DTF. So Ultra Color Max is a product that you can get on either place, just whichever you prefer ordering from. Um, but your HTV emblems and patches is going to be stalls and your screen print, that's going to be Transfer Express. Uh, okay. Jesse asks, does DTF require a pretreatment like DTG? It does not. And you're just, you get the transfer, press it, you're ready to go. And Jennifer says she sees some decorators using a laser to cut transfers. Is there a complete list of styles that are safe and successfully cuttable? Yes, we do have laser cuttable D, uh, PDF. I'll put this right here in the chat. Uh, there you go. Thank you. Lori asks, what heat transfer machine would you recommend for startup? I'm not sure if they so, mean press or. I, I was going to say, if you mean a press, um, I would personally recommend the um, Hotronics Auto Clamp. Um, I think that's a press that I just, I really like using it. Um, I think it doesn't take up a ton of space. Um, and you can find it on our website. I don't know, Sean, if you're able to leave a link to the auto clamp. Yep. That would be my recommendation. Um, another really good one for kind of startups would be the Fusion IQ if you prefer a swing away versus a clamshell. Um, but that the heat presses are a very involved conversation that I could go well over our time to answer that question. Um, but yeah, so the kind of Cliff Notes version. Um, if you're comfortable using an, a clamshell press, I would recommend the auto clam. If you're not comfortable using a clamshell, I would recommend the Fusion IQ. Ron commented that he pressed a linen paper after pressing DTF for a few seconds after the initial press, and it gives a little texture and changes the feel. Okay. Um, See, this is the purpose of like joining a Facebook group or something like this. I have my answers, but a bunch of other people who have tested a lot more things than I have, they have other solutions and options. So that's the kind of engagement that you could get. If you just pop a question into the Facebook group, people will come up with a variety of different things they've tried before. Uh, last two questions here. Chris asks, he says he has a left chest and a full back. Should he place two orders? Um, for, DTF. for DTF, yes. So I would do one of them as the back logo, and then I would do one of them for the left chest logo. Um, but you can put both of those in your cart and then order them at the same time so that you pay one shipping price. And then the last question we'll do is from Alejandro. He asks, would you start with HTV or DTF? That's a great ending question. That's a really good question. Um Ooh, it really depends on the order. And I know that that sounds like a cop-out answer. So I'm going to say, I'm going to say, if it's like your very first order, you haven't pressed before, I'm going to go with DTF would be my recommendation for starting off. Shauna, do you have a different answer? 
I think that's a great answer. Okay. Um, all right. Thank you all so much for coming. It was great chatting with you today. Um, I hope that you all have a wonderful rest of your day.